You are watching a clip from the John Perry channel, Genetics and Evolution. Let's talk about how bone remodeling, the actual process has changed over time. So you've done research mm -hmm. specifically in when did these different types of, of bone cells emerge throughout evolutionary history, and mm -hmm. you just published a big paper on that. Yeah. Do you want to talk about so, that for a little bit here? Sure, absolutely. This this kind of comes from reading, you know, the early textbooks of biology and just, you know, learning, okay, A, B, and C, this is what happens. This is how bones, this is how bones do. The end. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, cool. We we know how bones do. And then right. I made the mistake of looking at fish. Uh, and <laughs> it was a mistake because fish are incredibly complicated and they stem from way before tetrapods, right? So they come way down farther in the tree than, than we do. And so that doesn't mean they're more primitive, at least modern fish does not mean they're more primitive. It just means they took a different branch of life and they had a different tool set to work with. So everything turns out, everything looks really different in fish and they just play by their own rules, which makes my life really complicated. Yeah. So. I saw what fish, modern fish were doing. I saw what, you know, modern mammals, us and reptiles and everything, I think everything that's alive today were doing. And I wanted to just trace it back and see when certain diverges, divergences happened. Yeah. So to understand, to understand why this is cool, I have to give you guys a little bit of bone 101. Yeah, so, well, wait, well, one quick question first. What, yeah, yeah, what group of fish were you looking at? Teleos, bony, bony fish, uh, basically the ones that make up the vast majority. So think tuna, think salmon, think uh, opa, not sharks. So like yeah. bony fish, the ones that you would, that would end up on your dinner table. Nothing extremely special, nothing extremely specialized. And they were still doing everything really differently yeah. than, than all the textbooks said, because apparently nobody looks at fish. So... When you're looking for these rules that are supposed to guide all bone and, you know, like mm -hmm. you, you, they have to apply to all animals that have bone. Otherwise they're not rules and therefore you have to dig deeper. And for me, digging deeper means digging deeper in time. Mm -hmm. So bone 101. So you got to know that basically there's three bone cell types that you just have to keep in mind. There is the bone building cells, osteoblasts, mm -hmm. your bone destroying cells, your osteoclasts, and your osteocytes, which I call your bone maintaining cells, or the ones that kind of keep everyone in line. They orchestrate bone remodeling. They orchestrate uh, a bunch of different things. They sense pressure in your bone. They kind of just, they live in the bone and they have, think of squid arms or octopus arms and they reach out everywhere. So there's a bunch of those and they're the most numerous. So there's yeah. your three cell types. Now, all books say that those are your three cell types, one and done, that's it. Right. So it's pretty insane that the vast majority of living vertebrates today, the vast majority don't have osteocytes. And so, yeah, all of bony those, fish. Yeah. all of those are bony fish, which Crazy. is just like, come on, you guys, like you cannot follow a single rule, like rude. So I looked back in time and realized they did have osteocytes um, at some point in the Cretaceous and then lost it. And some things lost it even more recently. We're, we're not 100% sure. There's a couple of new papers that are coming out about exactly when certain things were lost. Anyway, mm. they come from ancestors that had osteocytes. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. We're back to following the rules. But if you go back just even a little bit farther, before jaws evolved, before limbs evolve, before any of that. So you're looking at mud slurping, jawless fish, early mm -hmm. Devonian, Silurian, the earliest vertebrates, armored jawless fish. And you look at them, the earliest ones, again, don't have osteocytes. And yeah. they don't have visible osteonal remodeling, the type of remodeling that we talked about earlier that's guided by uh, your blood vessels. Okay. They don't have it. It doesn't exist. Okay, so now we know that all our bone and all the, all the superpowers that our modern bone has, hasn't always existed, but they were acquired through evolution 
and possibly in a stepwise uh, fashion, possibly all at once with one animal, we're still not 100% sure. When you look a little bit later, there's another jawless fish that has osteocytes and has a bunch of other features that makes us think, okay, those are the ancestors to jawed vertebrates. And then from those, the earliest jawed vertebrates are the ones that have osteonal remodeling. And from there, you get, you know, all your splits of cartilaginous fish and ray fin fish and all the fish that we have today. And then sarcopterygians, the lobe fin fish, the ones that lead eventually to us, tetrapods. The story of bone is basically the story of vertebrates. It starts right at the beginning uh, with a really extremely simplified external armor. They look like beetles. They have only yeah. bone on the outside. They don't have any bone on the inside. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. They have no bone on the inside. It's a cartilaginous skeleton on the inside, bone on the outside only. And the bone on the outside is covered in, pause for effect, dentine, oh, wow. which is what our teeth are made of, Yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. So the first tissues that make our teeth today actually started out as ways that our mud slurping ancestors protected themselves. Yeah. So that's the story of bone. That's the story of teeth. They're all interconnected. And I got asked a really good question, which is why? You know, why did they need all this armor? Why did they need to put teeth on the outside and bone? Why did bone evolve in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. You get to that point where, okay, so not everything existed. Not all the features existed. Why did the very first mud slurping fish even evolve bone what was the point you know maybe they were happy to be soft squirmy wormy things why did why didn't we just continue down that road and the the answer is very likely because of eurypterids these giant sea scorpions that mm -hmm. tried to basically eat our early vertebrate ancestors and they're like mm, this is not this is not how we're doing this i would rather be armored and survive thank you and that's how <laughs> vertebrate mineralization likely started from that predation pressure. So yeah. we can thank scorpions and arachnids for our skeletons, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Nice. Nice. <laughs> okay. Editor John here. What Yara just said there is so important that I just, I have to restate it. Not because she didn't state it well enough, but because it's so important. I, I want people to, to really understand this. It appears that our skeletons and our teeth, the molecular precursors, the genes that we now use to build our skeletons and our teeth, those evolved during an arms race with ancient marine arthropods. Or again, as Yara put it. So we can thank scorpions and arachnids for our skeletons, basically, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> well, that's it for this clip, but don't worry. I post clips regularly, and every Thursday, I post completely fresh content. Make sure you're subscribed. Liking and commenting is also welcome.